topic. Uh, today, uh, the advanced topic on end-to-end -end ASR, and uh, I will uh, explain about several kind of uh, techniques uh, that improve the ASR or uh, the application of the end-to-end -end ASR. So uh, today, uh, the mostly uh, uh, the spending time for the multilingual ASR, but uh, the, before that, I will start the data augmentation. So uh, the, as you know, speech data have a lot of variations. Uh, of course, you know, it comes from the, uh, the, uh, our, uh, the, the natures, like, you know, the speaker characteristics or uh, the emotion and so on. Uh, which is not easy to augment. Uh, however, uh, other part is actually can be easily augmented. Uh, one of the, uh, uh, the, the issue is that the noise, that is uh, that actually uh, quite critically degrade our uh, speech recognition performance. And the room impact response is also another big factor, which actually uh, makes uh, the speech to have a reverberation echo and then this also degrade the performance. These two are, are the most uh, the difficult uh, are the, are the component in the speech uh, recognition. And another is the speaking style. Uh, that's like, for example, sometimes people are speaking uh, the, the, the very quickly, or some people are the speaking uh, the, uh, slowly and so on. And fortunately, these three components are uh, actually uh, the imitated uh, easily, and especially uh, the, uh, the, the, the first two, noise room impulse response, is actually uh, the, can be uh, the, the, uh, imitated by the simulation. And the speaking style, this is actually just changing the, uh, the, the, uh, the, the, uh, the speed, uh, which can be also easily controlled by the, the, the several audio processing tools and so on. So these uh, the three are actually quite uh, the, 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 uh, the widely uh, the, the tackled by, based on the data augmentation. And especially uh, noise uh, room impulse response is actually luckily, we have a very good uh, uh, the property, which is the, uh, how to call it, the, uh, waveform. Uh, the additive property of the waveform. Uh, yeah, I think this is fine. There are several technical words. Yeah, I forgot. Uh, the waveform has a additive additivity, right? Uh, the sound A and the sound B are the adding, and then we just the, this becomes a mixed signal, right? Uh, just uh, the adding the uh, uh, yeah, just adding the uh, the two uh, waveform, and then we can actually making the uh, noisy data. It sounds like uh, very obvious, right? But the, this is not for the other media, like a text and the image and so on. Uh, the uh, speech luckily has this kind of uh, the uh, nature. Uh, and the same for the room impulse response. And then generally, uh, the, this, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the process is written by this very simple equation. Uh, X is the original signal and R is the room impulse response, which we can actually uh, record it uh, by, uh, the, in the uh, quiet uh, the room, uh, various quiet rooms, where we can actually simulate the room impulse response uh, by the simulator uh, and so on. And the uh, noise, uh, we can again also recording uh, many noises. Right, and then uh, the, how we do it is we just following this equation, and then we can actually creating the various uh, the, uh, the uh, noisy speech, noisy and reverberant speech, and then uh, still you know uh, this is the speech, so we have a corresponding transcription, right? So input is just augmented, and we can actually train uh, the many variation of the noise, many variation of the room impulse response. And then we can actually make speech recognition uh, to be robust uh, against uh, this kind of uh, changes and so on. Uh, by the way, the, this is a very straightforward, uh, but the most important technique. All our kind of uh, the speech recognizer, uh, for example, the Google Home or uh, the Amazon Alexa, 
first starting from this process. And then uh, the, the, the doing some more fancy stuff like you know uh, denoising or uh, the, the separation or something like that. Uh, that this kind of fancy stuff have, happens. But before that, we always have this kind of our uh, data augmentation step. And then uh, the, our current technology uh, exists. Okay, so uh, let's uh, the, the, uh, the show you the, uh, the, uh, play some of the example. Let's, for example, this is a clean speech. Hope it not be super large. A word should be said here of the title of Dante's autobiography. This is just a clean speech. I can play it again. A word should be said here of the title of Dante's autobiography. Next, I just kind of are taking the uh, noise only data from the, the free sound. Some water sound, uh, the, it may be the, the bathroom, I'm not sure, but I just got it from the uh, the free sound. The next one. Some jungle, <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> and then, uh, of course, you know, uh, we might have some situation that you know we will uh, that want to use a speech recognition in jungle and so on, right? But it's not easy to collect such data, right? Don't worry, we can just you know aug the, uh, the augment that data. So, like for example, the first case is a word should be said here of the title of that case autobiography. We just adding them. Uh, but uh, it's actually, you know, there's the one parameter, uh, there are several parameters, but uh, uh, one of the parameter is actually control the gain and then making a noise to be louder or smaller because that's also affecting the performance. And then, you know, neural network knows this kind of variations, they could actually learn that, so. A word should be said here. It's almost I cannot hear that, but uh, it's a good example for neural network to train the model, right? And the same for the. The word should be said here the title of Dante's autobiography. Again, not sure it happens, but we can create this kind of conditions. And this methodology can be, you know, used for many of the situations. If we have our, our, some specific noises in our application, so on, we can correct them in advance. And then uh, they're, they're using the, uh, this equation and uh, just adding them. And then we can augment the data and so on. But the last uh, the, the, is the, uh, the change of the speed, which is the, the to kind of imitate the various speaking style. This is, by the way, called the speed perturbation uh, in speech recognition. And the ESP net stage two is actually including the speed perturbation. I think this one is making it. Sure. A word should be said here of the title of Dante's autobiography. Yeah, that's originally this one. Yeah, but it, we're just making the speed lower. And then uh, this is a, a good other augmentation to include a various the speaking style. And even, you know, uh, the sounds like a different speaker, right? So it can also be used to consider other different speakers and so on. So these are kind of a very intuitive way to add uh, the uh, the augment the data, but the another kind of important uh, uh, technique uh, developed in the, uh, the 2019 uh, is uh, the spec augment. Uh, this is to apply a line uh, mask in the frequency and the time axis, like this. So we just, the, not just uh, the dropping some kind of portion uh, or just kind of uh, the uh, dropping the some line uh, that that uh, we just uh, drop the uh, the completely uh, the these kind of region, and then the uh, the uh, the question will be the how how much the range of this one and when we will kind of apply it and how often we apply the mask and so on. This is a kind of a hyper parameters and so on, but by doing this kind of other uh, the the a random uh, the, the uh, masking, this actually uh, the behave to uh, improve the speech recognition uh, quite a lot. 
uh, during uh, training and so during training. So uh, by the way, of course, we should not do it during inference, right? So if you guys are the wrongly kind of set the uh, the, uh, the evaluation mode as a training mode, then the uh, the a spec augment, uh, for example, in ESPNet is actually applied, <laughs> and then this will make the kind of disaster. So please be careful about that. And uh, there are a lot of kind of explanation about uh, the uh, the spec augment. Some people may say that you know this is a kind of imitating the uh, the uh, drop of the the speech segment, which happens in the other uh, uh, telecommunication and so on, or uh, the same for the frequency being and so on. But uh, I say that this is for me very artificial. So for me, I am actually uh, the regarding it as a more like a dropout, a random dropout. But the the speech has some structure, and actually uh, the, the just uh, the dropping the one frame, uh, one uh, the, the point in the time frequency beam, which can be easily uh, the recovered uh, from the other information. So instead of using this kind of a structure. The, uh, the uh, the information that would be more kind of a, uh, the the, uh, the strong uh, the the uh, the uh, information drop uh, so that the, the speech uh, the uh, the recognition model uh, try to uh, make the model uh, robust against this uh, the, the uh, 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 masking. So that is my personal uh, the, the interpretation of the uh, spec argument. Uh, spec augment is actually uh, for me uh, the, the the more for the regularization uh, similar to the dropout effect because uh, this is a typical a uh, curve of the spec augment. Uh, um, the before the spec augment, uh, we can train the model, but the validation and the training, uh, the the difference is actually quite large. Uh, which means that the, the uh, model is not well regularized. Uh, but by using the spec augment, uh, we actually can uh, the, reduce the kind of uh, the difference of the training, the validation, and it's good to kind of uh, the keeping this uh, the small uh, difference uh, in the training and the validation. Although uh, it uh, becomes uh, more epochs to uh, the, the train the model because uh, this uh, the, 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 due to the fluctuation, the training becomes more difficult. So this is a kind of a very typical uh, the behavior of the spec augment. And this is why I kind of saw that I explained that the, the spec augment is very similar to the dropout behavior. And then the, the dropout also means that the regularization. So this is my kind of interpretation. Some other people may have another other interpretation. Okay, so uh, this is the uh, the the, uh, the spec augment, but the, the uh, by doing this kind of a smaller uh, the, the difference, we can actually safely train the model uh, the more epochs, and then it actually could finally reaching to the better performance. That is mostly I observe we observe in the spec augment, and it actually had a very significant improvement. Uh, uh, this is a one uh, the, the paper uh, comes from the the, the, uh, the uh, our team's the uh, the spec augment result, uh, but the, the it's almost half. <laughs> so uh, in other words, you know the, by the way, if we make more effort in some of the regularization optimization, uh, that without spec augment, it may reach to the something similar, but spec augment is very easily uh, the, the making the the performance to be improved. But just we need to wait a little bit more epochs uh, and so on. And uh, this is also the result that I showed before. Uh, Google uh, the spec augment uh, actually uh, the having uh, the record number at that time in 2019 uh, compared with all kind of strong competitor. So this the spec augment actually uh, the makes a big impact in the community. And then right after that, many people actually started to use it as a standard technique. So I'm very sure that the, the many of uh, the uh, the training, uh, the, the uh, tools and so on now are the supporting the, uh, the spec augment as a standard uh, the uh, implementation. 
And uh, I also want to mention that the data simulation is also quite standard. It can be included in the framework, like ESPNet actually has the data simulation on the fly during the training. We can also do that. But mostly people just kind of doing the data simulation in advance, offline, and then train the model, which is easy. Okay, sounds good. Uh, next, uh, move to the multilingual uh, ASR. This is, I say, application. Uh, the, and then I will explain about uh, the uh, the end-to-end -end ASR and the uh, HMM-based, uh, the phony based systems. So first, uh, I will just want to recap the uh, HMM versus uh, the end-to-end -end systems. And the one of the, uh, the big difference uh, is actually whether it requires linguistic resources or not, right? And uh, you guys may remember we, you know, played with the uh, the CMU uh, dictionary, right? And the uh, with this dictionary, uh, if we have such kind of very uh, good dictionary, we can make our other uh, uh, form based uh, the speech recognition. But the some cases it's just easy, right? That we uh, that we also had in the uh, the, the homework. Uh, we cannot make a perfect uh, the pronunciation uh, lexicon, and then. Uh, maintaining them is also very uh, difficult, and uh, the, the applied to the other language, and so it's uh, the more difficult, and so on. So this is actually uh, one of the uh, bottleneck uh, used to be in speech recognition, and the uh, this uh, the, uh, uh, the the problem can be actually largely mitigated uh, by using the uh, the end-to-end -end neural network. Because we don't need a phony, right? Uh, your uh, current coding assignment for which uh, the you guys don't use the phony, uh, the representation at all, right? So uh, without that, actually you guys can uh, the build speech recognition and so on. So this is actually uh, the good benefit. Uh, and then uh, the, we will use this nature and then we can actually uh, have a uh, the new paradigm in the uh, multilingual ASR after end-to-end -end ASR. But uh, I just want to know that this uh, always has a pros and cons. I just using this one as a benefit uh, at, uh, currently, but it actually can be a drawback later. Okay, so uh, the, let's uh, the, the start to uh, discuss about the, my experience uh, of uh, building the speech recognition in Japanese. Um, Japanese was actually not ASR friendly language, by the way, it was, yeah, now it will be. I will explain about it. By the way, this is a typical sentence in Japanese, especially it's in the, uh, the, uh, the, the technical term, and then a lot of kind of, uh, uh the, the issues happens. So first, uh, the, the big, uh, difference, uh, compared with, the, uh, some of your language. Uh, and the, some of your uh, some of your language uh, that may not have this issue, issue, and some of your language have uh, the same issue, would be that first that there is no word boundary, so uh, the, you don't have to you know consider to read this one. But at least uh, the, the, uh, the, I just want you to uh, the, the check that there is actually no space. So this means there is no word boundary. This is very typical in the East Asian languages, by the way. Yeah. So uh, if we really try to make uh, it as a word-based approaches, we actually have to provide this kind of space. And how to uh, provide it is very difficult, by the way. Yeah, I will also explain it. The second issue is that the mix of the four scripts, um, <laughs> yeah, Japan, in, including the Roman alphabet, but Japanese usually has three scripts uh, there, yeah. We are doing something wrong. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and we need a three <laughs> scripts. So one is uh, the originally from the, uh, the China, Chinese character. And we also have additional two scripts. And it's actually mixed. So for example, uh, red part is actually uh, the Chinese character, original Chinese character. So uh, some of you may actually read uh, that, that Chinese people may read it. Uh, and the 
ブラックワン is the syllable based original Japanese character. And we also have a green one.、Uh, this is another syllable、uh, based、uh, the character,、uh, but mainly used for the,、uh, the foreign languages. And of course, we also are often using the,、uh, the Roman、uh, alphabet and so on. So, Japanese, naturally, we are the, 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 the have a kind of mixed script、uh, the issues. And it's actually also、uh, the depend on the uh, uh, many uh, issues. Basically, the、uh, pronunciation mapping is、uh, many to many.、Uh, some of the languages are the, are the one to one, some of the languages are many to one, some of the languages one to many. Japanese cases, actually, it's a lot of other、uh, homonyms. And there、uh, the, are the, quite a lot of the multiple pronunciation、uh, that happens. And、uh, also, the one character has a very different syllable. So, this character、uh, is actually only one syllable,、uh, only one phoneme. And, and <laughs> this character, not in this、uh, example, but this character is actually、uh, one, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten phonemes, five syllables.、Uh, the, so it's one character, but the, if we, for example, assign the, each of、uh, the speech frames to、uh, the character, it is not uniform at all. Yeah, more or less, the, this happens to the, your language as well, because, for example, consonant and vowel are very different, right?、Uh, but the, this is quite <laughs>、uh, the, the,、uh, difficult in terms of the alignment.、Uh, Uh, and so on. And the,、uh, the how to solve this kind of a problem?、Uh, we actually, Japanese researchers、uh, developed a, a tokenizer, very special tokenizer, which actually jointly solving the word boundary、uh, mix of the, the script and、uh, the pronunciation problem. So actually, our tokenizer is、uh, developed in the,、uh, of course, it had a long history, but、uh, Our tokenizer, some of the, your other、uh, country, your other、uh, languages may also have a tokenizer, but the, many of them are rule based, right? That was the very kind of beginning. We moved to the machine learning, like a CRF or SVM and so on, because it's very difficult. So it cannot be solved by, by the rule only. And we're using that the data at the r i b u n manner、uh, to solve this kind of problem and so on. And、uh, this is actually、uh, the Uh, introducing another issue. So, actually, the, the, this means that the, if you, the, the,、uh, the, uh, the, the, uh, the, some of them using the tokenizer tool A, for example, there are several tokenizers,、uh, the Chasen, Mekab,、uh, the uh, Kitty,、uh, and so on. By the way, the third one, Kitty, was、uh, made by the Graham Newbig, the,、uh, the professor in the,、uh, the, the LTI. And <laughs> If we, for example, using the, if I use the Chasen and the Gram using the Kitty, and then the result is different. <laughs> so we couldn't compare the result actually. Yeah. That's a quite、uh, the difficult uh, uh, the issue、uh, the, and so on. So again, the, the、uh, Japanese used to be、uh, one of the most uh, the difficult uh, the, the,、uh, languages uh, to uh, perform the speech recognition. So, we need to have a correct tokenizer to well split and then providing the other phoneme. Otherwise, we cannot make our other speech e n g l i s h and so on. By the way, yeah, the difficult part is that depending on where we kind of split the word, sometimes pronunciation can also be changed. <laughs> so, this is very kind of our other, we have to jointly solve this problem.、Um, so,、uh, this is the, actually、uh, one of my other.、Uh, the, Goal,、uh, the, one of the big research goals、uh, when I started speech recognition, which is to remove this kind of tokenizer. So it is actually for me the dream technology. But uh, uh, the, fortunately, in, in my、uh, the, the, the middle career, I actually、uh, the, solved this problem. <laughs> I'm very lucky to the,、uh, have this kind of uh, the, uh, problem by solving it, which is we're just using an end to end letter. And then、uh, the skipping everything and directly predicting this four syllable.、Uh, that's it.、Uh, sorry. Yeah, directly predicting this syllable. 
we don't need a tokenizer. We don't need a, a pronunciation dictionary. We just predicting the, the from the speech to uh, the the uh, the this kind of uh, the mix of the syllable. It was actually quite working well, and the it my initial attempt is 2016 in the uh, uh, the one database called the Corpus of Spontaneous Japanese and 10%. And now there are a lot of kind of effort, like a spec augment, transform, and so on. It actually go goes to 5% or less than 5%. Uh, but end-to-end -end is actually uh, working quite well in this problem without using the tokenizer. And uh, probably uh, the, I am the first person to uh, the use the, uh, the, uh, the, the uh, without using the tokenizer to uh, the, uh, the perform the speech recognition in Japanese. And this is again one of my dreams. So uh, the, one of my dreams, uh, that I saw that this cannot be solved in my entire research life, but in just my middle research career, I solved one of my actual research dreams. Yeah. Okay, so this is actually great experience. This actually, the, the single languages uh, the, but Japanese uh, the, has a lot of issues, right? And then that means that uh, we can actually uh, apply the same uh, the, the methodology to the multilingual end-to-end uh, -end ASR. Again, Japanese mixed script. The, this means that single model to kind of uh, the, the deal with the several scripts, right? And also we also deal with a very different uh, uh, the, uh, the, the token that may have a, uh, different pronunciations and so on. It doesn't matter uh, the, if the, the neural network can handle it, we can actually handle the uh, multilingual uh, the, the, uh, the languages. So this is uh, the, based on my experience. After I kind of finished uh, uh, this work, I moved to the, uh, the multilingual end-to-end uh, -end ASR. And before that, the multilingual ASR was not easy. For example, this is a speech recognition pipeline. And the, we actually have to solve the multilingual speech recognition by having a language detector and their own kind of other languages, other ASR. Of course, some part like feature extraction and so on can be shared, but uh, there used to be acoustic modeling lexicon language model, each uh, built uh, by uh, using the separate uh, the ASR system. Uh, and so on. It was actually not easy. So this is one reason that the ASR uh, the team in the big companies, speech supporting many languages, used to have to have uh, many engineers. That you know, each engineer is actually uh, the taking charge of the one language or uh, several languages and so on. However, end-to-end uh, -end method could actually potentially uh, make it as a single uh, the neural network and so on. So how to do that? Uh, again, I didn't do uh, special things. I just using the normal uh, speech recognition in this, uh, the, 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 at that time, I just using the hybrid CTC attention that the, the, I explained in the, uh, the CTC section. And then uh, just uh, the ask the expand the vocabulary with the Latin, uh, Japanese, Cyrillic, and so on. We just expand the uh, vocabulary. And then uh, we also adding the character, uh, the uh, language ID, which is uh, the inspired by the machine translation. Machine translation people also putting it here. So I kind of putting the other uh, uh, language uh, the ID token and so on. And then just mix the data and train the single system. Uh, that's it. So the most of the effort is actually comes from the, uh, the the data preparation and mixing the data. Architecture is completely the same. And this is actually uh, the great uh, because before uh, the, we have this methodology, again, we have to uh, the, the make a uh, the system for each language. And for me, the most of the difficult part is the dictionary. The dictionary is the one of the most difficult part. I still remember that the when I was a company in Japan and I tried to make a, a Wall Street Journal speech recognition system, it took half a year. Uh, mostly we didn't know the English language, you know, what kind of resource we should use and what kind of uh, the dictionary we should use. 
And even we use a dictionary, there are a lot of redundant pronunciation and we have to kind of carefully check, you know, and then removing it and doing the experiment, doing it again and again. And we finally made a Wall Street Journal uh, recipe. But I'm sure that now you guys, if you uh, the learn the ESP net, uh, you guys can actually make a, the, the Wall Street Journal, uh, the, the speech recognition easily. And then this kind of effort, every language we used to have to do that. Uh, but that by mixing it and just kind of predicting the token, uh, the, the character, and then that we can actually uh, the, the mitigate the issue uh, based on the dictionary. So this is the one of my uh, results uh, uh, that we actually making the uh, 10 uh, language speech recognition uh, system and correcting the, uh, the, the 10 languages and the, uh, we make a speech recognition uh, the system and uh, this one, blue one, is a uh, language dependent system uh, the, uh, the, uh, trained by the, uh, the single end to end system. And the uh, red one is just mixing everything and then uh, perform speech recognition. And uh, we actually found uh, a very good uh, the performance improvement. By the way, this is error rate, so uh, lower is uh, better. So most of the languages, actually, we have a, a very good improvement. I can explain why later. And another kind of interesting uh, the, 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 the work is that uh, we uh, also the augment the token, as I explained, right? We are putting this kind of uh, language ID token in the beginning, or maybe the, the, in the end, that doesn't matter. But at that time, we actually put it in the uh, beginning in the language ID. And then this is actually very natural task, right? speech condition first predicting whether this uh, the, the speech is English or Japanese. This actually including a language predictor. And then after that, given this kind of uh, the speech, uh, the, uh, the language ID tag, we generating the corresponding transcriptions, which in this case is English or Japanese and so on. So uh, by using this kind of a token augmentation, we can actually combine the multilingual speech recognition and language detector in the one system. And again, I uh, we didn't change many of the kind of our, uh, the uh, architecture. We just changing the transcription and adding this kind of token. So this is now probably some people here are very familiar, right? Because the whisper or other uh, techniques are also putting a lot of kind of our, uh, token uh, in this kind of uh, the uh, the sentence uh, and so on. And then probably I am the first pe person to start to use this uh, the language ID token uh, in speech uh, the, uh, recognition. Although it is already used in the machine translation, but uh, I put this uh, the other kind of uh, the uh, language, uh, the, the ID token in the, the beginning, which I want to include language identifier uh, the, and the speech recognition at the same time. And let's check the kind of performance. Is this is an old result? Probably we should have better results. Uh, but the, this uh, the, is the uh, the, the uh, language uh, recognition performance, and the diagonal uh, the uh, higher means the language ID is correctly recognized. And the most of the cases actually very easily uh, the uh, the language ID is well uh, estimated, except for some kind of uh, the uh some cases like our spanish uh italian uh there are some kind of errors but i heard from the them that the, the, they are uh, kind of are difficult to uh the, the distinguish so this result is uh the, not very bad uh, uh in terms of the uh the concept the language similarity in, in the spanish and the italian and after that we also applied to the uh, uh low resource languages uh which is uh the <laughs> Actually, I couldn't. Uh, th these are several. Uh, one is actually from my computer. It is well uh, the display, but when I move to here and then display, it, it's uh, the, the, uh, the becomes this. So it's not uh, the, the my fault, but the display. <laughs> and but anyway, yeah, I. Couldn't did any of them, uh, or ex especially ex except for this one. Uh, but uh, uh, it seems like uh, uh, the 
uh, the, this methodology can also be working on the uh, the low resource uh, the luggage. And the, uh, this is, of course, not only our groups. There are actually the concurrent work in the other groups, like Google uh, and so on. And later, uh, this kind of direction is very accelerated. Uh, for example, after the, uh, the, our work, our group actually tried to kind of expand the language to the uh, around 90 languages, uh, the, the emerging speech recognition. And the open AI, is, uh, the Whisper, is supporting 99 languages, maybe in, uh, more, I'm not sure, but the, at least the uh, previous version is 99 languages. And the uh, next lecture, we will also explain about uh, our recent effort of reproducing the, the Whisper uh, model. We call it OS, OWSM, sorry, that is that uh, specific, correct, that uh, incorrect, OWSM, uh, that we call it the awesome model which actually supporting the 151 languages and the director of uh, the Google uh, the club here. So you guys can actually uh, test your own languages. So it's, of course it's uh, the, the compared with Whisper, uh, there are some kind of degradation, but uh, the surprisingly it's working quite well, at least for English and Japanese. Okay, I can do not uh, the, the, uh, the, uh, the demonstrate it. Uh, uh, but I uh, just want to show you that uh, the, the, our model, Awesome, is actually supporting quite many languages. So source language is, is actually 100, uh, 151, yeah. Uh, but uh, we are not sure, you know, that some of the language just, you know, may not work, but at least supporting 151. And uh, I tested Japanese and English and uh, it's working quite well. And uh, if I'm testing uh, Chinese, then it's working well, right? Yeah. These are also similar techniques uh, that we just are uh, mixing the data and adding the language to ID tag. And recently also the meta uh, is uh, the, the, uh, the proposing to uh, the deal with the 1,000, over 1,000 uh, languages, uh, this uh, uh, progress for the MMS and the, uh, this uh, direction is quite actively studied now. Um, and the, uh, this methodology can be actually applied to many of other problems. One of the approach is code switching. And uh, it's actually not easy to get the code switching data. Uh, how to make it? We just simulating it by concatenating the uh, multiple language sentences. And then regarding its other training data, and then data stage is same, just uh, train it with a single uh, the neural network and hope to perform the code switching and so on. And this one is also working uh, to some extent. Uh, it's not the best result, but just kind of mixing such kind of uh, the, uh, the simulated code switching data we can actually add uh, making the, uh, the code switching model uh, working uh, and so on. And I have a uh, several demonstration, but I can skip this, yeah. And another application uh, of this methodology is the uh, endangered uh, language documentation. So this is actually collaboration uh, with uh, the, the Jonathan, uh, the Amis, uh, which used to have a guest lecture uh, the, the, the here in the March Lingo uh, NLP two years ago. So he actually uh, the corrected uh, the Yoroshio Chu mistake, uh, uh, one of the endangered languages uh, in Mexico. And it has a quite difficult uh, transcription bottleneck and a transcriber shortage and so on. And also uh, the, uh, the making the pronunciation lexicon is very difficult. Uh, but by using the end-to-end -end ASR, we can actually build this endangered language, uh, the, the, uh, the speech recognition system. And the performance is uh, not, doesn't reach to the, uh, the, the expert, but at least uh, the reaching to the novice uh, transcriber level, which is not bad. Uh, then you know, we can just correcting that. Uh, the, it uh, by using the, uh, the uh, expert and so on. So uh, this uh, kind of multilingual ASR system can also be used for the other 
uh, the doc, uh, the uh, endangered uh, language documentation uh, and so on. And discuss a bit more about the uh, token augmentation. Uh, the, as I said, you know, we can just kind of adding the token augmentation, a uh, token, special token here, right? So it's actually can be extended many other kind of speech condition system. Like for example, if we put the speaker ID here, if we know the speaker ID and putting the speaker ID here, we can actually add a, a uh, doing the speaker recognition and the speech recognition at the same time. There are such kind of study exists. And the same for the direct ID. And uh, the whisper, especially having uh, uh, the timestamp uh, the uh, function, which is kind of providing the onset and the offset of the each sentence. Uh, this is also the, the, the performing the VAD and the speech recognition at the same time. And another uh, the, the interesting application is speech translation. And speech translation is also basically similar style. We just using the, uh, the probably we are just using the English and then uh, the generating the English text. But uh, uh, by just uh, the having uh, uh, the, the uh, Japanese speech as an input and then prepare the corresponding text data and then English as a kind of uh, uh, the, as, uh, the, the specifier of the language. And then we can perform the English to, uh, sorry, Japanese to English speech translation. And we can combine this to the other language and so on. And then we can also uh, building the, uh, the, uh, the multilingual uh, speech translation system uh, based on this uh, methodology uh, and so on. There are a lot of several kind of different architecture and so on, uh, the, but the basically uh, the technique is quite similar. Uh, by the way, the most di different part of the speech translation and the speech equation is that we have discussed many times uh, the monotonic uh, hard alignment property, monotonic alignment property, and so on. So actually, speech translation, people don't use CTC or RN transducer because of this kind of a uh, problem. Mostly people are using the attention-based uh, approach. And the... Uh, there are a lot of other token augmentation work uh, the recently, which is actually uh, the, uh, putting the, some of the, uh, the intention of the, uh, the text uh, and then uh, jointly kind of uh, the performing the speech recognition and spoken language understanding uh, at the same time. Uh, I also, by the way, have to apologize that this the lecture is speech recognition and understanding. But understanding part is a little bit shallow. <laughs> but uh, th this is because speech recognition is the most kind of uh, the technologically important, and the understanding part is just kind of uh, extending it and so on easily by uh, the, the using the classification of the intention uh, or uh, the, some other things. So that's why mostly uh, the, we are uh, the, the, uh, the putting the speech recognition. Yeah. Uh, by using that the speech spoken language understanding and the speech recognition joint modeling is also easily uh, the realized by uh, based on the token augmentation. And uh, I just want to note that the, uh, the, my kind of a lecture, uh, the, the, the second half of the lecture, basically I didn't change the architecture. Just you know, preparing the data augment, uh, data and uh, some kind of additional token or a data augmentation and so on. And then we can actually changing the speech equation functions to the other uh, speech uh, processing uh, applications. Of course, that as, uh, the, some of the system is still kind of an expert, uh, uh, they're, uh, they're specific to the uh, speech translation or specific to the speech equation. But the recent trend of uh, the, the speech uh, the technology is try to kind of unify uh, many of the tasks by using this uh, the token augmentation or even uh, the natural language based prompt uh, like a uh, large language model is doing. These are quite kind of active research areas uh, in uh, the speech processing, uh, similar to the other uh, the areas uh, the in NLP, computer vision, machine learning, and so on. Okay, so, okay, so maybe I can uh, the conclude uh, the, the, this other uh, part. Uh, so, uh, discussion is 
whether we should go with an end-to-end -end SR system for any of the problems. One of the biggest kind of our other uh, problem is that the, we need to have a, a parallel data to train the system. And uh, this is uh, very difficult to correct in general. Like I mentioned that, you know, I was that uh, our group is uh, the, the prepare, uh, providing the endangered language uh, documentation system based on end-to-end -end SR. But this is mostly, uh, the, we just made a system. And it was actually mostly uh, the, done by the great effort uh, in the field study and so on. And then they collect the tons of the data and we can make it. But it is not easy. Uh, also, the, uh, the transcriptions are the, it's, uh, the not standardized in general. So we actually uh, have to have a, a lot of uh, knowledge to standardize the transcription and so on. Uh, this is actually quite a difficult part. Uh. So anyway, the preparing the parallel data, it's a kind of a, uh, the one of the biggest uh, the issue in other, the, other speech end-to-end -end ASR based speech recognition. And uh, there are uh, the two direction. Uh, the one is uh, the pre-training fine tuning, uh, which I will explain it in the next week. And uh, uh, the other approach is that even many cases, we even cannot uh, correct the speech data. In this case, can we build a speech system? It is very difficult, but it's actually possible. That I will explain uh, the, in the next week. I plan to explain it today, but uh, I will uh, leave it to the, uh, the, in the next week. Uh, okay, uh, that's it. Uh, any questions? Okay, thank you so much.